Hello there everyone and welcome back to Empire Total War with the Imperial Destroyer mod. Today we're taking a look at the siege of Fort William Henry which was part of the French and Indian War. Um, so it's the British versus the French and the battle has already started with some of my skirmishers out here uh, firing on the French troops approaching. So, to explain how I do these historical battles for my historical battle series is that I try to, as much as possible, uh, take the terrain or the conditions of the battlefield and try to recreate them the best to my ability. It could be, it is quite hard for most of them since there's not always custom maps for the specific battles and uh, so forth. And uh, I also try to match the troop numbers, but not all, all, not only the troops numbers, but also I try to get the actual troops that took part in the battle. So in this case, the first troop that we saw here in the fight is uh, Rogers Rangers, and there were a group of Rogers Rangers at the siege of Fort William Henry, uh, and then also Fort William Henry would have been a fort similar to this. Really, I didn't want to use one of the big stone forts because they're kind of annoying. So I think this fits quite well with how the fort actually was. And uh, the reason why I'm doing just this, uh, this specific one is mostly because this is the siege that is depicted in the movie The Last of the the Last Mohican um, and then also a bit because uh, in, in itself the siege is not that significant but there's an incident where uh, native allies of the French massacre and take prisoner a number of uh, troops that are supposed to have uh, uh, British troops that have surrendered and should be uh, granted safe passage uh, back to safety uh, so in that sense it's important uh, if you look at it from uh, that angle so starting off the battle here or maybe I should go through the troop numbers or actually what I should do right now because we're closing in on a uh, kind of cool event here of the battle we have two things um, firstly, the French are going to march on to my bombs, my secret traps that I've placed on either side here, and they're going to lose quite a few troops. And then we're also going to have one of the regiments, the uh, 60th Royal American Regiment is... Uh, boom! There goes one bomb, and there goes the second. So the uh, Royal Americans are about to march out and uh, volley fire the French. So um, the reason why I'm leaving the forts is really to recreate a part of the movie which I really like. And that is when some of the British troops uh, move out of the trenches, move into line and then fire volleys at oncoming French troops and uh, allied native forces. And I, and I really like uh, that scene. So I wanted to kind of recreate it. And I'm going to try to keep sending troops out to volley fire at the French throughout the battle since I have three standard line infantry regiments as part of um, as part of my besieged force here. So in the actual battle, um, well first of all maybe we should take the commanders which is um, George Monroe which is in charge of the British uh, and you, he's kind of has a very. I, I like him in the movie a lot because he has that sort of, um, well, just the feel to him of the sort of British officer and his wig and all of that. And I, I, re I really like that character. So it's kind of a shame when he dies um, and the way he dies as well. Um, and then on the French side, uh, we have. Uh, uh, the Montcalm or uh, Louis Louis Joseph Montcalm, uh, who is in charge of the French side. So, in the terms of and also in the terms of the the um, the troop numbers here, we tried to make it as close as possible. I could have actually bumped up 
uh, the troops in the fort to the point where I actually would have matched the amount of troops that were present uh, to a one-to-one -one scale because there were about 2,500 British troops uh, defending the fort. Now, maybe not all of them would have actually been in a position to hold the musket and be part in defending uh, the fort since there were quite a few of them that were actually uh, sick with smallpox. But we'll get to that later, a little bit of a twist here in the siege. So, for the tr most of the troops that were in the fort, as far as I researched, were militia troops and so that is depicted in this battle by the fact that my walls there are completely um, completely manned by militia troops and then for the regiment the, the name regiments that I could find that take part in the battle were Rogers Rangers that we saw earlier the, the green rangers that was over here I'm not entirely sure if I have a unit left yes there's still they're still here but they've lost quite a bit of troops fighting the French um, so this unit was actually present at the siege. Then we also have the 60th Royal Americans, which we saw here fire volleys down on the French. Uh, they were there. Then there also was the 35th Regiment of Foot. Now I wasn't able to really... They weren't depicted in the mod. And as far as I gather, it would be like a standard... Um, standard British line infantry so they are depicted with the standard British line infantry and then just because in the movie you've got some uh, grenadiers or I'm not entirely sure if they are grenadiers but they have bear skins so they might be grenadiers so I wanted to put some grenadiers in there and also put some meat behind the defenders so it wouldn't be too easy for the French to just run us over for the French side we couldn't actually find a single regiment uh, that is depicted by the mod uh, to actually put on the uh, attacker's side. So for them it's mostly about the size of troops. So in the actual battle there was about uh, 2,500 as I already stated on uh, uh, the British side. While the French had about 6,000 men and then in addition to that they had 2,000 uh, roughly Indian allies. Um, and we can see the, Ameri the 60th Royal Americans preparing here to volley fire down on the French. And as we know close range fighting like this in uh, Imperial Destroyer causes a lot of casualties. Um, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to save the 60th Royal Americans, so they're actually going to retreat quite soon here, uh, off the um, battle, which is a bit unfortunate. I wish I wished to uh, still have them uh, to the end of the battle, but unfortunately, they uh, I kept them out here for just too long. Um, and then what else is there I could say about the historical setup? Um, well, there weren't actually that many killed in the actual siege um, and in the massacre either, depending on what source you go after. So, in that sense, it's not really uh, that historically accurate, but it would be kind of a boring video if we just had, because reportedly only 130. Uh, were killed or wounded during uh, the actual siege for the British so that would not have made such an interesting video uh, to just have that few uh, casualties and for the for the French we can ex suspect that there were even less casualties or at least due to uh, uh, hostile fire there, as I said, there were, I think I said, I've done, I've had to redo this video because it crashed. Uh, but uh, a certain number of troops within the fort um, suffered from smallpox. So we can imagine that some of them might have died during the conditions of the siege. 
which I believe lasted for about, um, I think it lasted for uh, six days or something like that before they actually, um, before they actually uh, gave up. Um, but the thing was, they didn't really stand that much of a chance. Um, now he was hoping, the general, Monroe, uh, was hoping for support from a nearby fort. Uh, but the commander of that never, never actually authorized the troops to move out. Or he didn't actually send his troops to move in to um, uh, help Monroe. And later on, uh, that commander was actually sacked uh, for cowardice, for not coming to the aid of the um, Monroe. And at this point, we can see there's quite a lot of dead French, but there is also quite a lot of dead British troops here, and we missed it, but a cannon shot came through and just annihilated the command section. Now, in certain cases here, quite a lot of friendly fire occurs during this battle. We could see that both the 60th and this British line infantry shot a lot of the skirmishers ahead of them, but then there was also some of the cannon fire from the walls. Even though it's very devastating and kills a lot of the French troops, it also bounces, sometimes very close to our own troops, and bounces through our lines in certain cases. Um, and as we can see, we're mostly... Um, I wouldn't say, we're not completely surrounded, but uh, there's only one way out of the fort, so they're, by covering it in a half circle like that, there's going to be no way for me to actually uh, be able to evacuate the fort. So they basically got me under a siege. In that sense. And right now, there's a bit of fire here back and forth in between uh, my British line infantry and some militia troops uh, by the French. So as I said, uh, that uh, there were about, uh, I think, um, well, what did I say? 2,500 British and 6,000, uh, roughly, if you don't count the Indian Allies, on the French side. So we wanted to depict that as close as possible, uh, but obviously um, we couldn't really fit that amount of troops. I could actually fit, on the British side, the exact amount of troops, uh, 2,500. I could have actually bumped it up so I would have uh, had the exact number of uh, troops present on the British side, but we wouldn't have been able to get those 6,000 uh, French troops. So I had to lower my tro troop count just to keep it, um, keep, keep the ratio uh, as close as possible. Now the actual ratio would have then been roughly um, I mean, the uh, two to one, or at least three to well, or two to one at least, uh, but preferably closer to three to one. But in this case, I think the French will field about two thousand um, five hundred, and I will field about fifteen hundred men. Um, so not really, but it, it's quite close enough, and also the French have a lot more uh, regular troops, I believe, than I do. Um, so in that way, it equals out. And also, the French have quite an advantage in their artillery, which we can see if we go over to this wall, where basically every single cannon have been destroyed due to enemy fire. And also, we know if, or, um, if you've seen my... Um, if you've seen my... Uh, Swedish Empire campaign, you know how devastating how is it can be towards the thick troops that line up on the walls. I really like sort of this sort of view right here where we got the officer and the flag standing here on the corner. We've got the cannon shots coming in, sort of like he's standing here surveying the battle. Now in the actual battle, Quite a few of the British cannons uh, did explode due to uh, just 
sort of mismanagement or overuse. Um, so quite a few of them did uh, uh, explode. Probably quite a few of them were destroyed, or at least the um, I'm not sure what you call it the the sort of casing or the the wooden structure that actually hold the cannon uh, probably was destroyed uh, to the point where you couldn't really use the cannons. Um, I did deploy a mortar for my side. The thing is, these mortars don't actually fire explosive shots. So they only fire round shots, so they're not that effective. And they're only going to kill about, I think they kill about 20 men. So that's not very uh, good. Same with this cannon right here as well. Kills about 20. And for some reason, canister is not really very good in uh, Imperial Destroyer. It's way too weak uh, compared to how strong musket fire is, especially at close range, um, where at really close range the bullets actually pass through multiple soldiers. So you can un understand how uh, devastating a close volley will be and if you follow my uh, my campaign uh, where I play as the, as the Swedish, um, you know that I did my what I call the Norwegian campaign and I was able to basically wipe out a incomplete unit of uh, 320 so 360 Danish soldiers just with one perfectly timed volley basically were able to wipe most of that unit out or at least half of it was absolutely just cut down by uh, a volley and then um, um, <laughs> and then the rest were bayoneted and shot as they were trying to leave. So continuously I'm trying to recreate that scene from um, from the movie where they move where the British troops move out of the trenches and you know he I think he says um, reform on the center or wheel on the center or something and they slightly wheel to face the French and they do that devastating volley and loads of Indians uh, or Native Americans um, if you want that um, gets wiped out by uh, that volley so in this case I mean moving out of the fort seems like a rather stupid idea especially given how many French troops are out here but the thing is most of the French troops actually prefer because of the angles um, of the hills and so forth they actually prefer to fire on the guys up here, up on the wall, rather than actually firing on my grenadiers. And most of the troops, most of the troops that he has field up here front is militia troops. So you can imagine militia accuracy versus that of uh, my grenadiers. I think grenadiers might have, I want to say 45 accuracy versus maybe 20 for uh, militia units so you can imagine um, the difference there in just uh, the effectiveness of the fire so I'm continuously moving these guys back and forth out here so first of course I moved out the 60th Royal Americans then the uh, British line infantry which is standing in for the 30 uh, 35th foot I'm actually kind of thinking that the 35th might have been Scottish for some reason. I sort of, I remember that I didn't actually check what kind of unit the, th the, the 30, 35th is. Because, uh, or maybe it was just, I sort of got the idea that after I'd done the battle that uh, the 35th might be Scottish. Just because of the thing that in the movie there are some Scottish troops present or I, I think I saw some kilts uh, when I saw some compilations of just the battle scenes so at this point um, the wall has been broken here on my right side and given the uh, given the what's it called given the honor of the day it would have been uh, it would have been okay for my commander at this point to have surrendered the fort 
as uh, the honor of the day was that um, to uh, you know not get sacked possibly executed uh, for uh, for um, surrendering a fort um, the walls had to be broken or I guess in a in a in a really bad circumstances where there's absolutely no chance of you defending then maybe uh, that would be allowed. Um, so I'm I'm gonna excuse myself if I repeat myself on some of the historical counts and so forth because this is the third attempt at uh, uh, recording this. Holy shit! Um, this is the third attempt at recording this. Just because one of the times it crashed, another time or the first time, I actually didn't like my commentary. Uh, and then the second time it crashed, and then, uh, yeah, so, if I repeat myself in, in some sense of the, um, of why some historical fact or so forth, uh, just, just realize that that's, that's why I'm doing it. Um, so anyways, uh, the important thing, or the important thing, the, the thing that stands out with the, this battle in an historical sense, so, well, what I'm trying to say is, the reason why I did this battle is uh, mostly because of the movie, but also partly because of the significance of the massacre um, that takes part after the battle. And you can imagine how that would have been used in a sort of propaganda purpose at the time. And um, according, if you look at Wikipedia, I think they put the casualties during the massacre to about... I around a hundred ish maybe a hundred to two hundred um, while I believe there are some some accounts or some some sources that uh, uh, or sort of te contemporary accounts putting the casualties as high as fifteen hundred um, so you can imagine sort of um, what that would do to try to drum up um, sort of sympathy for uh, the British troops and so forth and uh, uh, there's various accounts uh, going to either side whether or not the French officers trying to stop the Native Americans or if they just turned a blind eye to uh, the so-called massacre um, so um, but most likely it was nowhere near as bad as it's depicted in the movie where it's more more or less an absolute slaughter where they even depict uh, the commander uh, George Monroe being killed by Magua he, uh, he shoots his horse and as his leg gets stuck underneath um, underneath the horse he's not able to move Magua is able to move up and then actually cuts his heart out while he's still alive. So, um, in a sense, it goes, it sort of hints at how Monroe actually died because he actually died of uh, internal bleeding or basically his. Um, um, I, th I, can't re I can't recall what the, the, <laughs> the, uh, the medical term is. But basically, his uh, he, like his blood vessels opened up, and he bled. Uh, he bled out internally, uh, and and so I I think I read somewhere that so, some thought it was due to just his anger of the fact that the um, I don't know if I mentioned this, but he was expecting that a another fort that was close by, Fort Edward or Fort Henry, I can't exactly remember what it was called. Uh, it had quite a substantial garrison, so he was uh, hoping that he was going to get support from that, but support never came, and that commander was actually sacked due to that, and he was called a coward and so forth, and um, in, in some accounts of, it, of how they tell the story is that Monroe um, sort of he, his vessels then would have burst at, uh, due to this r resentment against uh, this other fort commander um, and how he sort of abandoned him to the French 
and the Indians. And to say that the other the other commander, I think, had something like 1,500 men. So still, the French would have outnumbered uh, Monroe. But um, as I recall, as I recall, there's another relief column of even more troops that turn up. Uh, I think they turn up too late, though, for the uh, for the actual um, siege. But they are quite substantial to the point where um, had maybe this commander of Fort Edward Henry. I think it's Henry, but for some reason I want to say Edward. I think it's Henry. Um, uh, had he act, uh, acted sooner, then maybe uh, the British would have been able to uh, hold out in a, in a completely different way. Um, and at this point during the battle, there is, I mean, I have basically lost at this point, and I sort of had an idea of maybe that uh, I would, we would uh, sort of uh, do what happens in the movie and what happened in real life, that, you know, the wall, the wall is broken. It's perfectly fine for me to, uh, uh, to surrender the fort with honor intact. So the idea was to hold fire, march out, have the similar kind of scene that you have in the movie where the two commanders meet and you have the, the line of troops on either side and then we would march off in column. And the thing is, I have actually filmed the sort of ambush part of this. So we're gonna have, uh, after this battle, we're gonna have the other bit where the British column is um, attacked by the Indians and we're gonna play it like it is played in the movie so it's gonna be a full-on massacre and not um, what sort of would be more closely accurate to the historical accounts of about 200 and the thing is in the historical account as well it's not uh, it's not like it's in the movie that you know the Indians go full-on attack and just cut them down what happens is that the Indians sort of, they sort of come up to the uh, the British column and sort of just start ripping stuff off them, um, and the British try not to sort of provoke them and so forth, and they they take musket from soldiers, clothes and so forth, but also um, actually drags people off um, to keep them as captives. Um, and at this point, I think we're going to see. I was kind of surprised by this because you can see my line infantry is turning up because thinking the French is going to come through the hole, and I'm going to have to volley them through there. But the thing is, I have a little spy, this guy, which is keeping my door open, and the French are going to be able to charge through there. Um, and also, during this uh, earlier. You might see it, I didn't really uh, take note of it at the time, but they actually fire back and forth a bit through the gate here. So I was completely taken by surprise that these guys came out of here. And I was telling these guys to hold fire, to wait for the perfect opportunity to fire. And yeah, that never came. However, the enemy is clumping up quite a bit. And we're going to wait for the Grenadier here to deliver a devastating volley and just absolutely crush the French troops. Unfortunately, shooting quite a few of my own as well. But as you noticed here, the enemy general was actually killed. And so, sort of a landfall for me, which I was about to lose here. But he rides on here, and there's a massive retreat on the French side, to the point where they almost lose the battle. Suddenly, all the militia troops start routing. You see this massive amount of French troops just running away all over the place. So I almost won the battle here, but unfortunately, he had another regiment right here. And I think this is what saved him, because if all of these infantry troops had retreated I, I'm pretty sure the cannons would have given up as well and uh, I would have actually won the battle um, and well at this point the battle is basically over uh, he's bombarding me quite hard with the artillery he's gonna blast my grenadiers we're gonna see the grenadier commander here get blasted 
by um, by how it's a shot and <clears throat> really I can't uh, I'm not going to be able to uh, hold on to the fort there is no point in sitting inside the fort waiting for him to just blast me with artillery so I realize you know the battle is over I'm gonna have to basically end it um, not to drag out the video to drag out the battle too long as it's already gone on for quite a while um, so I decide to uh, take my troops and charge them out of the yeah look at that devastating Howard's a shot just killing the entire bloody line so we're going to charge out and there's going to be a little bit of a struggle. The thing is, my troops at this point are all sort of ready to rout. So if the French had just let me march out, we would have all just scattered through the wind. Uh, but he actually fights us just at the gate. And that allows some of my troops to actually stay within the, the sort of aura of the fort. Um, the fort sort of no surrender aura that's in the fort and uh, there's gonna be a little bit of a struggle here at the gate quite a lot of the smaller troops are going to retreat uh, but had the French just been a little bit more um, not so gung-ho uh, they could have just won the battle right there by letting me slowly march out and my general is going to go out here. He's going to actually survive the battle, but he's going to take some heavy damage to cannons and, and so forth. And I think we've he's about, yeah, he's wavering. He's about to retreat. Um, this guy, which for some reason stood next to this cannon th almost throughout the entire battle, uh, decides now is the time to leave. And there we go. The general is shattered. And the battle is over. So here we see the statistics of the battle. That's not actually the general. I think this is there is the general. So Monroe is leaving the field at this point. But he basically has nothing left. So with honor intact. I deployed 1,700 men. Almost 1,800 men. While the French deployed 2,500-ish. Uh, we can see the losses here. I lost 100 men more than the enemy, but I actually somehow managed to kill a hundred men more than the enemy. Um, so a lot of these losses are probably friendly fire, uh, which is quite a common thing within Empire, but even more so in Imperial Destroyer, just of the devastation of the musket as it passes through multiple soldiers. Um, the highest killers on my side, Rogers Rangers, 60th Royal Americans, Light Infantry, Grenadier, British Line Infantry, and so forth. On the French, as I recall, I believe it must have been one of the Howitzer units. And then I think there was one Line Infantry that probably did something. The, he lost some units that didn't actually kill a single unit, as I recall. So marching up, they just got destroyed without actually um, um, destroying anyone. So right now, We've taken a look at this, and now we're going to switch over to me, uh, to us trying to recreate them, uh, the ambush. And it's going to be more, uh, as I said already, uh, it's going to be more along the line of what happened in the movie, uh, rather than the historical account of uh, things. So, let's switch over to that, shall we? And, so here we have it, the column of the troops that kind of ish managed to survive um, so uh, I bumped up the numbers because the actual troops of the last battle that managed to get away were maybe you know about 200 or so forth so I actually wanted to have some troops uh, to actually um, f fight a little bit of a battle here one thing that was interesting while setting up this one so I lowered the regimental size to I think medium so the units are, militias are 90, normal unit is 80, 80 troops. Uh, one thing that sort of accident, an, ac an accident that became historical accurate was that if you read the account, then uh, the, um, the British were actually allowed to keep 
one piece of artillery with them as uh, they retreated sort of symbolically were able to they were uh, the French allowed them to keep one artillery piece um, so without knowing it I <laughs> I sort of uh, I did um, uh, comply with sort of the the historical setup of the troops that would have been uh, would have been part of this uh, but as I've earlier stated, uh, we're gonna do the more sort of bloody, heavier fighting than what actually happened because it's, well, it would be kind of hard to symbolize what actually happened with uh, native soldiers running up to uh, the soldiers trying to snag muskets or whatever they could steal. Um, I believe there was an account of one uh, officer that basically they he they almost he is he sort of talks about it as though he almost was stripped completely naked uh, by the native troops um, the choosing of the map I mean there's not that many good maps but this one has sort of that closed in feel uh, which you have from the movie of sort of the valley that they're going through with sort of ish trees on either side and or at least it has this where it would be hard to maneuver because you have um, have these uh, sites that you can't pass by and I guess we have uh, um, Magua up here or po possibly not because I don't think Magua is actually a chief he's like a war chief or something um, so I guess he's coming somewhere down here at the line and so at this point uh, the Indians the Native Americans have started shooting at us. Uh, so hero musket men firing from the forest. Uh, not actually inflicting that much damage. And my light infantry is going to actually manage to kill off quite a few of these. Um, I wasn't actually able to take a look at the battle very close up during the actual playing of this. Because it goes over rather quickly. Um, but I would have wanted to do it closer to what happened in the movie where you have the natives closing in and then receiving a volley but we have a, a warrior society here clashing with the grenadiers we've got the cannons coming in there the units here trying to form I'm, tr I'm trying my best to form up uh, the militia and the the Royal Americans but the natives they're rather quick and they're able to quickly close the distance and attack before a lot of these units are able to fire. Uh, Monroe is uh, retreating here, trying to set up so to set up the these two militia units to fire upon the enemy. Uh, we've got British line infantry; it's taken some fire from the hill. I think I'm, I'm going to set them up as, as a square here. At this point, the Grenadiers are still fighting. But it's not going too well for them. Same for the skirmishers. The square is going to retreat. And uh, as we see now, Monroe is surrounded by uh, Native Americans. Here he is. And he's fighting here against the uh, Native Americans, trying his best. Arrows coming in, slaying some of his bodyguard. Um, we've got some soldiers on foot here trying to save their commander and then in the last here he actually gets shot as you saw he actually you can probably go back if you missed it he actually gets shot in the head and then uh, dips down there into the ground and we can see um, the statistics of this so I was still able to kill about 200 men which is well not really good given the fact that I deployed 600 um, but given that the enemy deployed almost a th more than a thousand men more than me um, to f and th that it is Indians able to close the distance as fast as they do because for some reason they're all Usain Bolt and can uh, can run really bloody fast let's see if there's anyone so these units were completely more or less wiped out we got a few guys running away so the grenadiers we've got one grenadier there another one just killed over there and 
uh, more grenadiers running away. So it didn't really go well for me, but uh, I mean, sort of as a bonus, I wanted to throw that in there because we kind of depicted what happened in the movie. If we look at who killed the most, we see the light infantry and the grenadiers are the ones uh, that were able to kill at least some enemies. Uh, but then we can see also the casualty rate. Only eight grenadiers survive, one light infantry, one guy out of the uh, Royal Americans, uh, and so forth. General, everyone died in the general group, and Monroe himself uh, being uh, slaughtered by a shot to the head. Rogers Rangers moving in the front there, absolutely slaughtered in the front of the column. They managed to get about here, I think. And I wasn't able to stop them to fire, so they uh, got completely slaughtered. But there we have that. We have the um, siege on Fort William Henry and the infamous incident with the Indians uh, attacking the, uh, the British troops that have surrendered afterwards that should have been given uh, safe passage um, back to... Um, back to uh, British lines with the assurance that uh, the, Brit the surrendering troops wouldn't fight for I think a year, no actually it was one and a half year I think, 18 months that they were not uh, supposed to take up arms against the French. Um, but there we have it, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and hopefully I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye!